two-dimensional TEE ultrasound anatomy of the mitral valve can be difficult to understand. However, using the virtual reality mode of our HeartWorks simulator, we can accelerate learning dramatically. We start the simulated transesophageal echocardiogram in the midesophageal four-chamber view. Here, we manipulate the virtual reality view such that we are sitting in the midesophagus looking into the left atrium. Our view is very similar to the image that would be obtained by a 3D TEE transducer placed in the midesophagus. The cut plane can be seen in transparent purple on the left image. With the omniplane of the transducer at zero degrees, we can see that the cut plane goes through the anterior mitral valve leaflet, and the posterior mitral valve leaflet. In order to orient ourselves to the ultrasound image, we will temporarily zoom out of the virtual reality image to establish our bearing. First we see that at zero degrees omniplane, the left edge of the cut plane in the virtual reality image on the left screen corresponds to the marker of the true ultrasound image on the right screen. It is paramount to remember that this will always be true, regardless of the angle of the omniplane. For clarification, we will always refer to this left side of the purple cut plane as the marker side of the cut plane. Once again, this will always correspond to the marker side of the true ultrasound image, regardless of the omniplane position. It should be noted that in this image, the left side or marker side of the cut plane cuts through the anterior lateral wall of the left ventricle. To further clarify the position of the cut plane, we will zoom out of the VR image again. It should be noted that the zero degree cut plane slices through the anterior lateral wall of the left ventricle. In the next image, we simply advance the omniplane to 50 degrees. In this image, the marker side of the cut plane still represents the marker side of the true ultrasound image. However, now this side of the cut plane is moved from the anterolateral wall closer to the junction between the anterolateral wall and the true anterior wall of the left ventricle. In the next image, we will advance the omniplane to 90 degrees. In this image, the marker side of the cut plane still represents the marker side of the true ultrasound image. But now the marker side of the cut plane has moved further anterior to the true anterior wall of the left ventricle. Finally, we advance the omniplane to 140 degrees. Again, in this image, the marker side of the cut plane represents the marker side of the 2D image. However, now the marker side of the cut plane has moved from the anterior wall of the left ventricle to the anteroseptal wall of the left ventricle and now includes the aortic valve and ascending aorta. Now that we understand the various positions of the omniplane, we return to the virtual reality view as if we are back in the midesophagus looking into the left atrium. Again, we have an on foss view of the mitral valve as would be seen by the cardiothoracic surgeon when performing a left atriotomy for mitral valve repair or replacement. Here, we've returned to the cut plane at zero degrees omniplane in the midesophageal four chamber view. In this case, the cut plane transects the A2 and A3 scallops. The A2 scallop demonstrated here. The A3 scallop demonstrated here. and also the B2 
P1 scallop demonstrated here and the P2 scallop demonstrated here. It should be noted that minor variations in probe and omniplane position can result in various combinations of scallop transection. However, the anterior mitral valve leaflet and the posterior mitral valve leaflet will always be transected at some location. In this next image, we advance the omniplane to 50 degrees. In this case, the cut plane transects the P3 and P1 scallop of the posterior mitral valve leaflet. P1, P3, and also the A2 scallop of the anterior mitral valve leaflet, as demonstrated here. When performing TEE, this image should always be developed, if possible. This is referred to as the mid-esophageal mitral commissural view. The arrangements of the scallops in the ultrasound image should be noted and can more easily be remembered after studying the virtual reality image. This cut plane represents the longest or major axis of the elliptical mitral valve annulus. In the next image, we have advanced the omniplane to 90 degrees. In this case, the cut plane transects the anterior mitral leaflet and the posterior mitral valve leaflet. The anterior mitral valve leaflet will always be associated with the anterior wall of the left ventricle. Identification of the exact scallops transected cannot be determined in the 2D view. In this case, the scallops transected are the ones that are demonstrated here. A1, part of A2, P2, and part of P3. In the next image, we move the omniplane to 140 degrees. In this case, the cut plane transects the anterior mitral valve leaflet, again demonstrated here, and the posterior mitral valve leaflet, again demonstrated here. This cut plane will usually, although not always, transect the A2 and P2 scallops. A2 scallop demonstrated in this view and P2 scallop demonstrated here. This cut plane represents the smallest or minor axis of the elliptical mitral annulus. In this next slide, we demonstrate that at 140 degrees of omniplane, the ultrasound cut includes the aortic valve and the ascending aorta. This is further demonstrated in the next view, also at 140 degrees of omniplane. This view is known as the mid-esophageal long axis view. So, it can be seen that understanding mitral valve TEE anatomy is based on an understanding of the orientation of the omniplane in the mid-esophageal four-chamber view, mid-esophageal mitral commissural view, mid-esophageal two-chamber view, and the mid-esophageal long-axis view. 
in addition to understanding the representation of the cut plane by the 2D ultrasound image.